Okay, hi everyone. I hope this video finds you well. So we are talking today about the conditionals, the if and the if else statements. So it's like when you ask yourself, should I stay or should I go now? If I stay, there will be trouble. If I go, it will be double. This is the clash. So the Boolean logic. What is it? Why is it important? So we answered those questions. Um, it's so important to make a decision. For example, if I ask myself, should I go to the doctor because um, I feel a little bit sick or not? So you would ask yourself a series of questions. One of these questions would be um, when you have a temperature, only a temperature. So if the temperature is greater than or uh, is greater than 98.6, then I do have a temperature. Else, I should go to school because I'm fine, right? So this is a Boolean expression that is used in an if statement to make a decision. If you have a temperature greater than 98.6, then you have a temperature. You can rest at home. Otherwise, else, go to school because you're fine. Here is here it is in a loop example. So it's like if you have guesses left greater than zero, and you are not winning, you can keep playing. Like this one is going to ask you, what is your guess and keep going and so on. So basically, if you have two conditions, you did not win because this is the not, not winning. If you did not win and you still have guesses left greater than zero, then keep playing. So... The Boolean OR, as I showed you before, it needs at least one value to be true. If both values are false, like if both gates are not open in here, then you have sad sheep because they don't have access to the tasty grass. Right? So here it is in an IF statement. If is less than 8 OR is greater than 65, this person gets a discount. The Boolean AND, it's like if you have two walls with a door in each one. You have to have them both open for Finn to go to the treasure. Right? To get to the treasure. So, again, here it is in an actual code. If the age is less than 8, and the height is less than 58 of uh, 57 inches then the toddler or the um, child gets to use the booster seat okay here's conditionals what is the affordance of an an if statement what is the affordance of an if else statement now the if statement is the ability to provide uh, the ability to either do a code of block or skip it. The affordance of an if else statement to choose between two blocks of code. So definitely you're doing one, but which one? With if else statement, you're doing one code of block or block of code, but which one? So, the if statement, it's used to make a choice, to do something or to skip it. Based on the current state of the program, the program can make a decision. So, for example, if I'm approaching red light in my car, if the light is red, I would slow down to definite stop. If it's yellow then I would slow down to a little bit, wait for it to be red, to stop. If it's a green, I would keep going. 
So if it's red light, I would start initiate the sequence for slowing down to eventually stop. So this is a boolean type variable. So I have boolean red light equal true. Now if if I am approaching a traffic light and it's not red light, I would change that to false. Then I would not slow down. I would skip the slowing down sequence. So this is a function which is basically includes the sequence for slowing down. So basically, basically, I use the if statement to do that or skip it is it red light if yes then slow down if not skip that I would jump so basically if I have for example a height greater than 68 or basically that is um, you can think about it as um, 68 inches or 6.8 6 foot 8 whatever you think about it so if you have this height then you can join the navy if you don't if you don't if you have less than then you'd skip because you cannot join the navy here's another example if height is greater than 62 and height is less than 77 you can join the Navy. So here is a compound Boolean expression. You have to evaluate this first to true or false, then evaluate this to true or false, then you apply the logical AND. If the total result is true, you do this statement. You print this statement. If the total result is false, you would skip and you don't print this statement on the console. So here is a function that returns a boolean value. So is the movie G rated? And you provide the movie name. If that function, and you would know about functions in CS131, but a function is a sequence of statements grouped together. It's like the callable unit. It's a callable unit, right? So if the total result is returned as true then you would print must be 13 or over to go alone if it's false you don't print this one because no need to print this statement right and you would skip printing this statement or this warning so now you can you can Compo combine two sub expressions with the logical operator and so is this returning true if it's returning true then you should check this one is the ages less than 13 if this is true then again true and true is true and you print this one if either of them is false either of them then you don't print this one right because you need both condition to be true to print this warning so many different combinations are possible but the result must always be in a single boolean value so you can't check these you can't check these so you do this one, then this one, then this one, then apply them from left to right. So this one is heat greater than 140. You would evaluate that to true or false. Then you do this one, true or false. Then true or false, whatever that is. Now you would go from left to right. For example, let's say that was true and that was true. Then you would do that and that becomes true true and true is true now let's say this one is false then or false because you would take this one and put it in here it's like you're doing math right you're doing math calculations 
when you have all of them in the same precedence, you'd go from left to right. So true or false, true. Okay, how a conditional work. So a program is really a long list of instructions fed into the CPU. Like this, you have instructions and you feed them instruction by instruction to the CPU. And remember the fetch, decode, execute cycle, right? This is what we are doing. So conditionals work by skipping or jumping over instructions. So while often referred to as branching, decisions are made by some form of jumping over a block of instructions. So for example, if, if a Boolean expression is true, a jump over instructions is not done. So you do not as you do not jump. If it's true, you would keep going with the instructions. If it's false, if the condition is false inside the F, then you would jump and continue right after the F block. So instructions usually are inside the curly braces. So there is a rule in C++ that if you have only one instruction, you don't have to use the curly braces, but we say whether you have one or multiple lines, always use the curly braces. Always surround your instructions with the curly braces. It's a good practice. So if the Boolean condition on the if statement is false, that means you would skip, right? How do I skip? By performing a jump. I jump. How do I perform a jump? A jump is carried out by changing the program counter. It's like I've been going 1001, 1002, 1003, assuming that one, the 1003 was checking a condition. And the condition was false, then I would skip these lines and I would go to 1009. So what are those? Those are the instructions inside the curly braces. And here is the explanation of what I've just said. So a jump has been implemented in this case. So here it is. I was doing okay 1001, then 1002, but, but, if we do a jump, it might set to 1015. Skip all those to 1015. Okay, what about the if else statement? So it's used to choose between two blocks of code. Should I turn left? Should I turn right? Based on the circumstances of a program can make a decision. So for example, in a game, the user chooses the direction to turn if they choose left, the car on the screen goes left. If they choose right, the car on the screen goes right. So it's like if the turn equals left and the turn is again Boolean variable and this is called the true block because this is executed when the condition is true and this one is called the false block because you would skip that condition and do this if the condition is false. So you would skip this block and you would perform this one if this condition is false. This is why we call it the false block. So again, it's still a jump. Now, you have to perform a jump in the if else, no matter what. You either jump over the first block, which is a true block, or you jump over the false block if the condition is false, um, true. So, for example, if the Boolean expression is true, then you would keep going, but when you get to the beginning of the false block, I would skip it. For example, let's go in here. So, let's say this is true. True means do this one. Anything in this one. Could be one statement or a million statements. 
I would do the true block. But then when I finish doing the true block, what should I do? You would skip over this one, right? You would skip over this one. Okay, again, what about if this is false? You would skip over this one and start executing this one. This is what we mean by this. So this is in case uh, if you have a true case. What about if you have a false case? If you have false case, then you would jump over the first block and you would continue the next block and go on. So remember, the jump is really done by changing the program counter. Jumps have to be implemented at any point in time you are executing some instructions. This instruction appears in memory at some address. The hidden uh, register PC, the program counter, stores the address of the instruction that is currently being executed. When a conditional jump occurs, a condition is checked. If the condition is true, then a jump occurs. A jump means updating the program counter with the instruction to execute, which in turn causes the instruction to be fetched and run. And always remember the fetch decode execute cycle when we talk about the program counter. Now if the condition is false, then the instruction at PC plus the size of the jump is executed. So if the uh, PC was having 1003, then how many instructions you have um, to jump over? Let's say 4, then plus 4, then I put in the program counter 1007. And I execute this one because I jumped over the 1004, 5, 6, and 7. And I'm executing 7, sorry. Okay, some languages have separate else if statements. C++ does not. What does that mean? It means some languages, they have if, and here is the Boolean expression. Okay, then you have inside some statements. Then you have else and some statements. And if you are going to have another if, you must have this inside the else so it says if that happened do this one otherwise if you need another condition then you do else which means the otherwise then if this happened do this so basically you would end up with something like this if else or sorry this one is going to be like if else right and here if and so on so C++ does not have a separate else if statement and here is this does it have st the structured if else if it's unneeded it's unneeded in the C++, C, COBOL, Java. However, they have this. They have if a condition happens, do this cut of block. Else you do the if directly. Else if do this one. Else if do this one. Else if do this code. Then eventually, if none of these conditions applied, then you do the else. It's like if I say, uh, if your grade is A, excellent. Else if your grade is B, very good. Else if your grade is C, good. Else your grade is not good. So you cannot have A and B, so you have to only get one complement. Either it's excellent or not a complement, and when I say your grade is not good, right? So let's ask ourselves a question. So we now know that we have F, else, F, else, which is called the else, F chain. Now, 
what is the most number of statements that can print? And what is the least number of statements that can print? So usually if you have a completed chain like with if, else if, else, the answers to those questions must be one and one. Why? Because if that condition applies, then you print this one. If that does not apply, you would skip this code and check this one. You check this one. If that applies, you do this one. If that does not apply, then you definitely need to do this one. So you would need, you need, you would do one. At most one, right? Because it's, it's like how many grades you have. You have one. Whether it's A, B, C, D, or F. But you have one. You cannot have Y, two, right? And usually, usually in C++, or basically most programming languages, if you have one condition evaluated to true, you would do this block and jump over anything else. If that is, uh, so for example, if that is false, you would jump over it and check this one. If that is true, then you do this one and jump over anything else. So how many if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, um, you can have as many if, else's as you want. So, here is a conditional uh, problem. This is um, something like what you have in the quiz on Canvas. Assume a properly formatted program. What prints when the following code is run and the user enters 77? So, for example, let's take it <coughs> step by step. Int high equals zero. So, high is zero. Then you get the height from the user, and we say the user enters 77. So height is 77. So is height greater than or equal 62? Yes, it's 77. So is it greater than 62? This is true. Then what about this one? Is it less than or equal 77? Yes, it's 77, so the equal applies, so this is true. True and true, that prints, that prints because it says what prints. That prints, you can join the Navy. So you can join the Navy. Okay, now go to the Canvas modules and do all the quizzes and the modules where this lecture is found. Okay, do that and have a great day. See you in the next one.